right from the beginning you've got to listen for the most beautiful heartfelt tone. And then in the right hand, just absolutely gorgeous, like, like a young mother singing to a baby. Hello, I'm Bob Rose. Welcome to this uh, tutorial uh, brought to you from Heart of the Piano. This is Ilyinsky. Versace, and this is for the ABRSM Grade 7. This is a beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous piece, but um, some real problems in um, the origins of this solo piano version. I'm going to come to all of that, um, but th this is so beautiful. So basically, my particular version is from Core Classics, Essential Repertoire for Piano, ABRSM. Very, very good book. There's going to be a review of this coming out soon. I do thoroughly recommend this book with a few caveats. Um, and apparently you can either um, use this edition or you can use um, the uh, keyboard anthology from years and years ago. Now, there are some versions knocking around on IMSLP for free um, and other places on the internet. Um, I'm going to come to what the difference is um, because you might not all want to rush out and, and buy this book. And in fact, in many ways, if you're only going to play this piece, you probably are not going to want to play it from this book, but I'm going to I'm going to come to all of this. So um, the version here um, is basically exactly, almost exactly the same. If you look on IMSLP, and I'm going to have links uh, to all of this stuff in the description below. If um, if you look on IMSLP at the piano duet version, um, because basically it's really hard to find the history of this piece. But from what I can gather, um, and it does seem to be a little bit sketchy, but from what I can gather, this was a ballet suite for orchestra. Um, and then I think it was then turned into a piano duet version. I don't think um, Ilyensky made a solo piano version. I don't think this is his solo piano version. Now, if you look at the piano duet version of the whole ballet suite, and then look at, at this particular movement, which is number seven from his ballet suite, what we have here is the piano one. So, that, so it's for two pianos. Um, piano two, um, let me just bring it up on, uh, on my computer. Piano two actually just does something very, very simple like this. It goes... Um, whereas the, the piano one part uh, let's have a quick look at piano one. Um, this is um, and basically it's almost exactly note for note, marking for marking, what we've got here in this version, which apparently uh, was edited by Howard Ferguson. And I really kind of need to try and find that book and go, what was Howard Ferguson doing? Why do we, why have we got a, a, an arrangement that is basically only the, the first piano part? Because it doesn't work. For me, it just really doesn't work. It's very beautiful. And when I played it through the first few times, I was like, oh, this is really beautiful. But then I kept found, finding more and more issues with it. I was sort of scratching my head going, why does it do this? And what's going on here? This doesn't sound quite right. And then, and again, there'll be a link in the uh, description below. Uh, then I had a look at the original orchestral version, which is really, really beautiful. Now, there is no actual orchestral recording of it. But, you know, I used to be a composer. I'm pretty good at looking at it and imagining what it's going to uh, sound like in my head. And it's not incredibly complicated to hear what this is going to sound like. It's basically for a small um, string ensemble, including double basses. So it's basically violin one, violin two, viola, cello and double bass um, and harp. And this is what the harp plays. So, you know, do have a look at the original uh, orchestral version. It, it, it just brings so much light onto the whole thing. The harp goes and then it goes. Um, So you've got, you've got this dominant chord on the final beat, which you don't have in this version that ABRSM are, are recommending. So um, 
to try and cut a little bit of a long story short, when I was first looking at this, and also the, the Piano One part doesn't have pedal markings. This has pedal markings, and the pedal markings are just absolute nonsense, in my opinion. You've got pedal, new pedal, okay, new pedal. And th this just sounds terrible, and I don't think this is what the um, guy on the uh, official ABRSM recording does. I think he goes and then uses almost no pedal. Something like that. But, but so if I play it as it's written, this bit here, beat four, it just sounds very, very bare. Like, that's just weird. Um, so what I was al already doing, I was already doing this intuitively before I even looked at the original orchestral part. What I think that should be done is to have one pedal for the second half of the bar. Something like this. So you blur, you blur the subdominant and the dominant harmony. So if I put it together, you've got this. And, and that final beat does need to come right down in volume. By the way, Bersace means lullaby. This is so lullaby. You have to imagine a mother just, you know, singing her little baby to sleep, you know, go to sleep, <laughs> go to sleep, you know, with great tenderness and great love and just, you know, really, it's very, very beautiful, very heartfelt. Go to sleep, you know, all this stuff, go to sleep. Da -da -da -da. And imagine, you know, rocking and just wishing all the safety and love for your little baby, you know. And, and this, and, and when you bear that in mind that that's the spirit of it, this final beat, all in the pedal, is so beautiful. You know, the blurring of those harmonies is really beautiful. So I don't think that it should just be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You know, it's basically tonic, and and um, I need to do an, a tutorial at some point. But if you watch my other tutorials, I do very often talk about the fact that when we're on the tonic, there is no tension. When we come away from the tonic, there's then a little bit more tension. And what happens when we have tension? We slow down and we get a little bit louder when there's tension. But here it's subtle. So here we flow, and then. Um, let me change the pedal a bit more. So we flow, a little bit of tension, more tension. Except that here, I don't think we want, and then more tension like that. It's very tender, so, so we have this mixture. But the, we, we just take our time and enjoy, enjoy that little bit of tension. It's like... Um, dum, 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 dum. It's almost like like this beautiful tender feeling where we're like tension doesn't have to mean it's a negative emotion. The tension here can just be oh I love my baby so much. It's it's like oh there's just so much emotion, you know. So And ideally we just want to play it to the point where where it just flows. It's not too contrived. To sleep. <laughs> but but it has to have this ebb and flow to it, you know, definitely. Anyway, so then um, I was just thinking, this still doesn't sound right. And then I naturally, intuitively added this. I added this extra A flat note. And then if you look at the, um, the original orchestral part, look at what the harp is playing. He does actually do that. The harp then plays the A flat. Now, I, we could go, um, we could just play exactly what the harp plays and add the C flat. Um, but I think that's a bit too much. So what I'm doing is I'm basically recreating the harp part, but taking out the C, um, the C flat. But also, 
we need to bear in mind that the string section, uh, and here I'm reading from the uh, the original orchestral part. So the first violins go dum da dum, the second violins go dum da, and then the violas go da dum. So we've got dum. And lo and behold, that is exactly what we get in the second piano part. So, so when we've got, um, um, if we just play the F and the D flat at the end of the bar, we're ignoring all the other notes that all the other instruments are playing. So it needs to have at least the A flat in my opinion. And then it sounds so beautiful. Like, let me ask your opinion. Do you prefer it as written? This is like what we're supposed to play for ABRSM. Or do you prefer what I've done, which is to make it a bit more accurate to the original orchestral part, and we add this A flat? That's so much more beautiful, isn't it? Um, and this pedal marking is just absolute nonsense, absolutely ridiculous. Something else to bear in mind about harp. When the harp plays, plays this, they don't have time to dampen their strings down. So when harps play, the strings keep on resonating. So a harp will sound more like, like all the strings are going at once. So what I'm creating is something more, more like what the harp does. And then, I suggest an extra step as well, and then this first bar is just going to sound exceptionally beautiful. What I suggest is, instead of just very cleanly changing the pedal halfway through the bar, I suggest that you overlap changing the pedal. So if I slow it right down, now here I don't change the pedal just yet, so here I'm blurring it, and then I change the pedal just before I play the next note. So. Um, um, Now, can you hear that, that moment of overlap between, between here and here? Then I change it quite, quite late on. And then that is really exceptionally beautiful. Another change that I would make is that in the original, the strings are pianissimo and the harp is mezzo piano. The harp is mezzo piano because when you're in the audience watching basically an orchestra, the harp playing mezzo piano is basically the equivalent of almost pianissimo. So I would just make everything pianissimo. And when the right hand comes in, um, the right hand is, is basically like, like piano, if you think. But make everything pianissimo. And then when the right hand comes in, a little louder. And then here we come down a bit, I think. And with that extra note in the left hand, it's so much more beautiful. Now, basically, I have made so many changes to what the ABRSM version, what they think it should be, because it's taken from only half of the piano duet. So I've, what, I, what I did is I was looking at the original sort of piano duet, the both pianos, then I was looking at the, um, uh, the original orchestral part, and I was writing in more and more things and making more and more corrections, to the point where I had so many corrections on my page that I actually just made my own edition. <laughs> so here is my own edition. And um, I'm going to make this available for a small fee for anybody who's interested. So this is now actually arranged Bob Rose, you know, it's arranged by me. But this is so much better in my arrangement because it's not just the first piano part. And there is another version on IMSLP, which um, apparently was the... Uh, what, what, what did they say? This is as played by Fraulein Auster Erhe, or however you pronounce her name. My, uh, you know, apologies for my bad German, which I'm guessing means that it's a transcription of what this concert pianist played in a recording or played live. Now, you can tell that, that, um, that this pianist, basically she 
based everything on the first piano part, like me, made some changes. But I feel like she didn't make enough changes. She just made very tiny little changes, but not really the changes that it needed. So um, the version that, that I, I actually haven't recorded it yet, but I will record it over the next couple of days. And it's not going to be the version that ABRSM recommend, because I think it's really not that good. It's, it's my version. Um, and, uh, as you know, as I do this tutorial, I'll show you little bits and pieces from my own arrangement. So, for example, you know, the original is, is uh, the, the ABRSM version is this. And my version is... Um, and something else that I've done as well. I get the impression that whoever arranged the piano duet version from the original orchestral version, were they were in a bit of a hurry, or they really were a bit slapdash about it all. Because there's, there's quite a lot of things that I look at and I go, really? Why have you done that? Um, and one of them is dynamics. And there's basically crescendos and decrescendos in completely different places to the original in ways that I just don't think work. So, for example, um, bar um, 22. In the ABRSM version, um, 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 they, they actually say, slow down through bar 21 and then it goes down really low. And then they say, then get quieter as you then go at tempo. And I'm like, I was really scratching my head going, how on earth do you do this? So you have to go, um, um, um. I mean, I can't even do it. Um, it just makes no musical sense to me. So let, let me just play it up to speed. But then you have to get quieter as you play that. Um, and then suddenly go piano. It just makes absolutely no musical sense at all. Now, what I've done, like, and I've done this all the way through the piece in loads of different places. And, you know, I'll put up on the screen as I'm talking about all of this. What it actually says in the original is that in bar 22, the beginning of bar 22, you go down to pianissimo at the beginning of that bar. Um, and then you get louder, but I think this crescendo really means more tension, and I've spoken about this in other tutorials. I don't think crescendo necessarily means get louder, it means increase the musical tension. So we've got increased tension, increased suspense. Um, and then I think we go up to speed. Now something that, that I've done, in the orchestral version, they don't say speed up, slow down, slow down, speed up. They leave it up to the conductor to decide. So what I've done is basically it's up to you where you put the rubato and where you slow down and speed up. It, it should be pretty obvious. So um, uh, forgive me, I'm going to have to just loosen my keys because my, 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 on my piano loads of keys are sticking. So I'm just going to loosen up some of the keys. There we go. So so if I'm going um, from, from bar 21, um, it just makes sense that we slow down, um, and here. It just, it's just intuitive that, that bar 22, the getting louder is like we just slow down. Um, and then... So, you know, I'm, I, I basically, I'm going to leave that up to people. But, you know, what, what, they, what they've said so, so much of the time here, the speed up, slow down stuff in the ABRSM edition just makes no sense to me at all. Well, uh, and not, it, yeah, because it, it doesn't just come from ABRSM. It comes from the, um, this piano duet version. And the piano duet version, uh, let me just double check, actually. Does it say all these speed up, slow down things? Oh, it does. So, so I'm looking at bar 21 and 22 in the piano duet version. And this is what I mean, that I, I think that whoever's, whoever arranged it for piano duet, I don't think was Il Ilyinsky. Um, because why would Ilyinsky have put uh, a tempo halfway through bar 22? It just makes absolutely no sense. 
Um, and I'm going to trust my musical intuition on this one because, you know, the, in the original, it just doesn't do stuff like that. The original is is crafted so beautifully and the piano duet version is just like, huh? So I'm, I'm trusting my musical instinct that whoever did it just did a bit of a weird job with it. Um, so um, I, I've also um, added... Um, other parts. So, so let, let, let me just play through through the, the ABRSM version and see what jumps out at me. Um, I'm going to go from bar seven. Um, okay, I'm just going to play the version in the book. Now, yes, this just did not work for me. And again, this is what's in the, the piano duet version, but it, it makes sense in the piano duet version because you have a second piano part. But here, they do this. And for ages, I just could not make that sound good. And I'm going to find it hard to read this, by the way, because I've already, like, crossed loads of stuff out and tried to write my own version on it. So trying to read the original version is a bit tricky. But as it is uh, in the book, um, crescendo. And that, that just sounds so clunky. And no matter what I did with it, that just sounded really clunky. It just didn't sound right. And then when I looked at the original and looked at what the harp was playing, I was like, ah. So what I've done in bar 10 is I've basically kept the, um, the original harp part, which is, which sounds so much better. But then it sounds a bit bare without having the third in there, which is played by one of the string instruments. So I put it in the right hand. Um, which meant that then I sort of led to that note in the previous note in bar nine by having a C flat in the right hand. So I then do something like, um, um, and again, you can follow this. Uh, I'm gonna superimpose this on the video. So this is my version. And then it, we've got um, this right hand going to that note. And then that lets you have that, that beautiful, beautiful heart part, not this weird clunky, which just doesn't sound right at all. So then I also mirrored that into bars five. Uh, bar five, this is my bar five and bar six. There's that C flat in the right hand, which sounds so nice and resolving to the B flat. And it, everything just sounds so much better. So uh, I'm gonna uh, continue. I've, I've done things as well, like in the original, the um, in bar 11, the first violin has tenutos over the B flats. Now, speaking as a string player, when I see a tenuto when I'm playing in an orchestra, it just means dig in a bit more and give a bit more vibrato. But as a pianist, I want to see those markings. I, I don't just want to sort of um, um, have a different markings. Like here, in, in the piano duet version and the ABRSM version in bar 11, it says crescendo, decrescendo, hairpin. It doesn't do that in the original. So I've just, I've left that out. So, so my, my bar 15 is... Uh, uh, hang on, I'm still learning this. Yeah, so, and then, you know, in the original piano duet version, it's got these weird... Which I think you do naturally. If you don't put those markings in, like back to my version, uh, let me just tenuto those B flats a bit more. I think you do that naturally. You don't need to sort of be told to to over exaggerate this this hairpin. Um, anyway, so carrying on from the uh, from the uh, piano duet version or the ABRSM version, which I'm going to try and read without all my millions of scribbles all over it. Um, And also, it, th there's a lot of places here where it says, oh yeah, take that in the right hand. Um, and in my version, I've just put it in the right hand, so, so it's just easier to read. Uh, anyway, so bar 13. Now, 
I don't like the left hand going going down that way because it it, it actually does it actually does something different, um, but it doesn't really sort of go well with um, yeah what the heart plays doesn't really work. So um, I actually took that bit from the version as played by Fraulein Asda Erher, however you pronounce her name, and so my my bass line uh, sorry my tenor line does something slightly different, which goes. Uh, which I think works better. And then here, so the difference between the original bar 13 and then my bar 13 is um, I'm basically making it much more faithful to what all the original string parts are doing. So instead of, let me try and read it as it's written, uh, if I can ignore all my millions of markings. Um, and then my version. And maybe I'm being a bit fussy, but that is more in the spirit to the original. Anyway, um, and then here, I feel that it, it really needed to say flat in the right hand. Um, so anyway, but there's, there's lots more sort of bits and pieces like that. Let me carry on from the original. I've changed a lot of this, but I'm not going to go into all of it. Um, uh, God, what's all, what, all the original notes here? Um, I, I <clears throat> made some changes to this part to make it a bit nicer. Um, now, something that I think is really worth doing, if you have a sostenuto pedal, that is the middle pedal, on a grand piano or on a digital piano. Not the middle pedal if you've got an upright, which probably does something completely different. Now I'm not going to explain massively about the sostenuto pedal. Go Google it or, you know, look it up on YouTube, someone explaining the sostenuto pedal. But what we can do is essentially, I want to have from bar 19, I want to have this bottom E flat going all the way through while I change the pedal each time we've got this chord, this chord, this chord. Now if I use the middle pedal, I can hold on to the E flat at the bottom and change the pedal each time we have a different harmony, but the middle pedal keeps that E flat at the bottom going. So I've written this in my score, in my um, edition. It says uh, sostenuto pedal. Well, you don't have to look here, it's, it'll be above me. So, um, so when we get there, we go, and then sostenuto pedal, and then that keeps that keeps that bottom note, and then I can I can do all these other things in the pedal, and I keep that bottom note going. Um, now, if you don't have the sostenuto pedal, uh, or you really don't want to use it, you know, don't really don't worry too much about it. And so in these bars, uh, 19 onwards, that, you know, like, like as with the rest of this edition, I've also made differences to be a lot more authentic to the original dynamics, uh, crescendos, decrescendos and stuff that were in the, the original orchestral part. But let me carry on playing. Um, uh, got it in the sostenuto pedal. I'm playing in the ABRSM edition at the moment. Um, okay, I've already spoken about all this weird stuff going on here that just makes no sense to me. And then we're back to the original. Um, so again, um, overlap pedal, um, add the A flat. Very, very singing, you know, like, like a mother to a baby full of tenderness and, and wishing all the safety and, and good, good love in the world. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I forgot, I'm supposed to be playing the original. I'll play the original. Um, and then, yeah, yeah I've, I've changed dynamics here because um, in the piano duet version and the ABRSM version, it says diminuendo here, but actually 
so bar 29, where's my bar 29? Yeah, actually in the original it gets louder. Which makes so much more sense. And, and I've also added extra stuff in here. I've added that C flat. Um, because um, um, in the original it does this. And that just sounds very weird and very clunky. It, it needs a C flat in there. Uh, in the original, the C flat is down here. Uh, in the violas, I think. Um, um, but I, I've just put it an octave higher. And that, the, the, the addition of that C flat just makes so much difference to, to the feeling of what's going on there. There's so many moments where it's so clunky because the first piano part, the second piano part um, is playing the, the C flat so that it doesn't, the first piano part doesn't need to. With no second piano part, we need to add that C flat, otherwise it just sounds very weird. Um, but, but it doesn't go... That, that makes no sense musically. It makes sense with the crescendo. That makes sense. Um, and also, there's a missing chord that, um, again, I think it was presumably in the second piano part. So going from bar 29, this is the original. Um, very weird. Now, now, um, so when I say original, I mean ABRSM. I mean the, the ABRSM and the piano duet, piano one. Now, in the orchestral part, in the um, uh, double basses and cellos, you get this at the end of bar 30. So going from bar, bar 29, um, and then one, two, three, beat four, you get this lovely D flat um, dominant harmony. Um, so let me play my version, which, uh, let me, where, where is it? Uh, uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, uh, let me do it with the right dynamics. Um, now my keys are sticking at the bottom, so sorry about that. Isn't that just so much nicer? Um, Uh, and then in the uh, orchestral version, it goes slightly louder here. And then, and then now starts coming down. Now, in the ABRSM version, absolute madness, bar 35 and onwards, it says do this with the pedal. It says go from bar 35, then one pedal here, and then one pedal here, then no pedal. Which is what the official ABRSM pianist does. So going from like bar 34 um, in the ABRSM edition. Now, even in the piano duet part, the second piano is, is holding, it's holding all the chords in the background. So why would you not have the pedal going all the way through that? And then especially if you look in the orchestral version, you've got this, this like the, the, the strings are all just holding this, this chord all, all the way. As the harp, as the harp plays all of this, and the harp just lets all those notes ring out. The harp isn't constantly muting all those notes. So we, we won, like from bar 35, We absolutely want all that to ring out. It's, I don't know what ABRSM are thinking with this insane pedaling. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, anyway, so uh, I've changed all these things in my edition. Now also something that's, uh, that, that I think is quite interesting. Um, in the piano duet version, they, they finish with, uh, let me go from bar 35. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, 
two, new chord, three, four, new chord. Now in the original string version, the, the orchestra version, it doesn't do that. Um, I'm, I'm going to play it with the, the notes from the piano duet version and the ABRSM edition, but with the original rhythm, which would have been this from bar 35. E4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then you've got a bar of silence, 3, 4. Then you've got a minimum, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Pause and then off. That's actually the rhythm of the original. Uh, and and I'll, I'll uh, superimpose that um, as I'm to, to show you. So um, I want to keep that original. So what I've done in my edition, I've, and also bear in mind that if we actually sort of do it um, with those silences, let's say that we do it the way that it is in, in the uh, original string version. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, off, two, three, four. Sounds weird on the piano to have all that silence. And then to have um, this chord here, one, two, silence, one, two, it's just weird. For me, it just doesn't work on the piano. I can imagine it with a string orchestra because they can really sort of let the note die away and the conductors there. It's not gonna work on the piano. So this is my recommendation from bar 35. Two, three, four. This is a bar of silence, but I'm keeping the pedal on. And then maybe for one B or just at the end of the bar, I'll take the pedal off so, so there's a brief moment of silence. And then what I've gone for, I've gone for this chord, but for a full four beats. Two, three, four, and then this one that they recommended ending on. And I think that's a really beautiful ending. Really, really nice ending. Um, so um, other than that, <laughs> so basically this tutorial is just talking about why this weird, weird addition that I don't think was even arranged by Ilyinsky himself. It, it just can't have been. And it's missing an entire second piano part. So, you know, like if this was me sitting the exam, I would just go, I'm sorry, I'm playing this version, uh, even though it's not one of your recommended editions. And even though you might go, huh, this is, this is different. Now, it is tricky because if you're sitting a practical exam, then this is really easy to do because you can just walk into your exam and give your examiner this sheet music and then they will be judging you from the sheet music. And there's no like, oh, those aren't the notes in my copy. It's a no brainer. If you're doing a practical exam, you know, I really recommend um, using my edition or at least putting in some of the suggestions that I've given you, such as adding an A flat there, which just makes so much difference. A flat, you know, um, at, at least do that, you know, uh, um, as, as the bare minimum of things that, that's needed to, to just make this sound so much better, um, in my humble opinion. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, this is all about love, tenderness from the heart. You have to listen to the tone color. Do n never, do not just learn the notes. Never, when you start learning this piece, yes, it's got six flats. Yes, it might be difficult to read. Do not just sit down and start going. Right from the beginning, you've got to listen for the most beautiful, heartfelt tone. And then in the right hand, just absolutely gorgeous, like, like a young mother singing to a baby. And, and, you know, do not just be like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, it's a bit beyond the scope of this tutorial, but you've got to feel the tension and release in your heart, in your chest. I just love that, that feeling, that, that, it's so tender. 
it's so beautiful that moment and so I just naturally slow down a little bit for it. Um, it's a bit beyond the scope of this tutorial but but you have to feel those things. You, you don't just go one, two, three, four. Um, so what, I think that's going to be sort of pretty much most of the things that I would want to cover. Um, so I'm going to leave a, a link in the description below to my website. You can contact me through my website if you'd like to buy my edition. I, you know, it's not going to cost a lot. Uh, I also do um, lessons online and I have space, spaces for students at the moment, if you're interested. Um, um, and again, do contact me through the website below. If you found this uh, tutorial useful, do press like, uh, do subscribe, uh, all, all the usual stuff that, that helps uh, this channel to become more popular. Uh, and, uh, and so it's worth all the ridiculous amount of time that I put into making all of these things. And um, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, you should now go do some practice. I will leave you to go do some practice. And thank you very much for tuning in and goodbye.